Hi everyone. The function of a rudder is to develop a transverse steering force on the aft side of a ship using the reaction force of the water flowing along the vessel and the rudder as well. In today's video, I am going to be talking about the ship's rudder, the role of the rudder and the different types of rudder that are available in the maritime industry. Let's get started with today's video. The rudder is usually located in the water flow aft of the propeller, as you see in the video. Depending on the type of ship, the area of the rudder ranges from about 1.5%, that is 1.5% to 10% of the underwater lateral area. If you don't know what is underwater lateral area, that is equal to the length of the vessel multiplied by draft. So if you multiply length by draft of the vessel, you get the underwater lateral area. Here you can see the rudder has been set in the heel of a flap rudder. I'll talk about the flap rudder as well. The rudder should be shaped in such a way that the water flow can be deviated as effectively as possible in combination with minimal resistance. Giving the horizontal cross section of the rudder a wing profile satisfies these demands. In fact, the rudder is a vertical wing on which a lifting force is generated by the water flow in the same way as an aeroplane wing. Propeller blades and a nozzle get a lift. This is also known as the rudder force. The drag should be as low as possible. The lifting force gives a turning moment around the ship's center of displacement. This is what rotates the ship. For slow speed maneuvering, the rudder should cover the propeller diameter as much as possible in order to make optimal use of the water flow of the propeller. The force that the steering engine must supply depends on the torque that must be applied to rotate the rudder. The torque is equal to force by distance. This force is the resultant that you see in your diagram known as N. The total moment depends on the position of the rudder stock compared to the point of application of this force N and the distance between the rudder stock and the leading edge of the rudder. When the rudder is free hanging, such as a spade type of rudder I'll show you later, the rudder stock must also be able to absorb the total bending forces of the rudder. Here in the diagram you can see A is the distance between the rudder stock and the point of application of N. N is of course the resultant force which is negative under pressure and positive if it's over pressure. V is the velocity of water flow. L is the lift and D is the drag of the rudder which should be at a minimum. Depending on the rudder profile, the rudder stock is located at about 25 to 40% abaft the leading edge of the rudder. Most rudders are hollow and empty. The inside is stiffened with horizontal and vertical profiles. In smaller vessels like fishing boats, rudders are still supported in specially constructed heels or in case of marine rudders at half height for bigger ships. Now here in the label diagram you can see number one is the transom. This is located in the aft part of the vessel. Number two is the steering flat. Number three is the aft perpendicular or the rudder axle. Number four is the rudder itself. Number five is the trunk of the rudder. Number six is the space for the rudder stock. Number seven is basically for ice protection. Number eight is the rudder dome. In some ships, it's also known as dead wood. Number nine shows you the stern frame. Number 10 is the wash bulkhead on center line. Number 11 is the stern frame center. Number 12 is the center line of the propeller shaft. And number 13 is side girder with number 14 as the foreplate. I will show you number 12, 13 and 14 more clearly in the next diagram. So you can see actually in a rudder how it all looks like. So you can see number 12 
which is the center line of the propeller shaft. You can see on the left side of the drive diagram. You can also see number nine there, which is the stern frame. Number eight, you can see is the rudder dome or the dead wood. Number one, you can see is the transom. Number 13 is of course the side girder and number 12. I think I've talked about 12 already is the center line of the propeller shaft. In these diagrams as well, you can see the frame at arc perpendicular. And you can see in the first diagram, you have number eight as the rudder dome, number six as the space for the rudder stock, number five, rudder trunk, and number two, steering flap. And then similarly, you know the numbers and what they are called already. So I'm just trying to show you the same thing from different angles and how it looks like from different angles. The suspension of the rudder, if we talk about, is the drawings and photos will give you an idea of how the rudders are supported. The next few pictures that I'll show you. We'll start talking about the different types of rudder which are there. The first one is the spade rudder that you see on your screen right now. So here you can see a spade rudder on a reefer ship. This is freely suspended from the rudder dome, right? There's nothing underneath it. In terms of construction, the spade rudder is very simple because it has no support. For this reason, it is very cheap and it is widely applied from yachts all the way to fast ferries and tankers. The rudder usually becomes narrower from top to bottom to reduce the bending moment in the rudder shaft. The next type of the rudder is the flap rudder. The flap rudder has a hinged flap at the back of a rudder blade. This blade or this flap is rather moved mechanically by the flap guide at the top of the rudder in such a way that the flap's turning angle is twice as large as the turning angle of the main rudder blade. The steering methods of the flap differ per type of flap rudder. When the maximum rudder angle is 45 degree, the flap has a maximum angle of 90 degree with respect to the ship. In this rudder position, it is possible that 40% of the ship's propulsive force is directed sideways. In combination with a bow thruster, such a ship can navigate transversely. Now what I'm showing you here is number one, if you see is the rudder blade again. Number two is the rudder stock in the rudder trunk. Number three is the flap of the rudder. Number four is the hinge line. Number five is the steering engine. Number six is the steering engine foundation. Number seven is the gland and bearing. Number eight is the rudder dome. Number nine is the bearing and number 10 is the flap actuator. This is of a flap rudder, of course. The advantages of a flap rudder provide extra maneuverability. That is if the main rudder blade is as large as the spade rudder. It also provides the advantage of course correction, which can be performed with small rudder angles, which means that the ship loses less speed and therefore consumes less fuel. However, there are certain disadvantages as well. The disadvantages are that it is costly and it is vulnerable and the large rudder forces require the rudder stock to be bigger. Now what you see on your screen right now is showing you how the current flows at maximum rudder angle. The picture is labeled for your understanding. Here I am also showing you the propeller and the effects of the propeller wash or rather the water that is displayed from the propeller when it hits the rudder, how the effect is on the radar, how the current flows at maximum rudder angle. So you can see in one position the rudder is absolutely straight and the other it's at a position which is due to the helm order which could be either port or starboard and here you can see how the rudder then changes the flow of water around it with the changing angle of the rudder blade. Now let's understand the marine rudder or the mariner rudder. The mariner rudder is used on large ships like container ships, bulk carriers, tankers and passenger ships. The rudder horn is integrated in the ship's construction and the marina rudder is attached to the stern post with the ability to rotate. This results in a strong and a very robust rudder. Disadvantages, however, of this construction are that there is a large risk of cavitation at the suspension points and that the cast construction is more expensive. Here you can see I have shown you the parts of a marina rudder. You can see the actuator at the top, that is the rudder actuator. 
then you have the rudder stock clearly shown to you how the rudder stock looks like so you can see how the rudder stock is very instrumental in moving the rudder to different angles then you have the rudder trunk you have the cone block the rudder horn the rudder blade itself the pointle the pintle black and the pintle itself which around which the rudder swivels this is another photo of the marina rudder now let's go to the last step of the rudder which is the fish tail rudder the fish tail rudder has been developed for ships with a slow speed probably less than 12 to 4, 13 knots the after edge of the rudder blade is provided with a friction increase to give extra drag to the water around the rudder i'll show you a picture of that I'll, then you will be able to understand it better so here here you can see this is a picture actually of a removal of a complete rudder a complete rudder a rudder of this type actually weighs around about 100 to 120 tons and they are removing from the from the vessel probably to do some maintenance work or to replace it altogether. I'll show you another picture and then I'll come back to the fishtail rudder and I'll show you how the shape of the rudder uh, provides the acceleration required. So this is a, another picture that is showing you the alignment of the rudder and the stock in the ship. You can see how the rudder stock is going into the rudder. The rudder is lying flat, the rudder blade is lying flat and the rudder stock is going in there and uh, you can see how this rudder will swivel around with the movement of the steering gear which helps the rudder to move at different angles very instrumental this is very instrumental and these pictures are priceless i mean this gives you a very good understanding of how the rudder and the rudder stock are integrated anyhow i come back to the fishtail rudder that i was talking about and you can see how the the after edge of the rudder blade here you can see the shape of the fishtail rudder the after edge of the rudder blade is provided with a friction increase you know just to give it an extra drag to the water around the rudder now that drag extra drag to the water around the rudder helps in the maneuvering of the vessel in its own so you can see how the the acceleration the water accelerates around it and there are some stabilizing forces this shape of the rudder itself allows the acceleration so it flows the acceleration delays stall and that stabilizes and allows a lot of streamlining of the water around the rudder helps the rudder to move around and give the vessel um, you know that maneuvering edge which helps the vessel to maneuver in especially in tight situations uh, so a fantastic rudder as well um, can be found in uh, medium sized vessels and helps for faster maneuverability. So I just made this video guys. So many of you are preparing for exams and these kind of questions are sometimes asked uh, to both deck officers and engineers on the types of rudder which are there. So I thought not only should I be speaking about it but I will try and show you some different pictures which gives you a good understanding of the topic. Thanks for watching guys. All the best. Let me know what you thought about this video. Bye for now.